Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this month's Power BI Office Hours. We really appreciate you taking the time today. My name is Jessica Dikama, and I am the Marketing Manager here at Blue Granite, and I will be co-facilitating the webinar this morning. Today, we have Eric Lostrom leading the webinar. Eric, as many of you may already know, is a principal at Blue Granite with a focus in self-service and corporate business intelligence and is the host of our monthly Power BI Office Hours. So with that, I will hand it off to you, Eric. Great. Thanks, Jessica. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the final Power BI Office Hours of 2019. I can't believe that uh, Thanksgiving is just around the corner. And um, with uh, the holiday season upon us, at least here in the States, um, we're going to take December off. So um, anyway, hope uh, hope everybody is doing well. And uh, if you're in the uh, upper Northeast, hope you're staying warm. Uh, another couple um, other important notes. So you can go and uh, view prior recordings of these sessions, and we're now on YouTube. So um, uh, instead of trying to paste the the gobbledygook that is the um, the YouTube channel link, um, and I'll I'll actually go there at the end of the, the day today. But if you just go to tinyurlcom forward slash bgpbioh Blue Granite Power BI Office Hours, that'll take you right to our our YouTube page. Um, our YouTube channel, beg your pardon. And in there, not only is it the Power BI Office Hours uh, recordings, but uh, we've got other webinar recordings out there as well. So I know um, Jessica's really done a lot of work to, to make that easy to find and, and put a bunch of really helpful content out there. So definitely head over there um, and you can check out the, uh, the prior recordings. Um, also, be sure to check out our blog. Um, there's a lot of really great things out there, not just Power BI related. If you're into machine learning and AI, if you're into uh, you know Azure and Databricks and those kind of things, uh, a lot of really, really great content out there on our blog. Um, and then uh, if you're interested in learning more, maybe about some of our Power BI uh, offerings including training uh, definitely check it out uh, my voice is a little shot because I just got back from doing some training so um, uh, but definitely uh, we want to help you guys be successful so if there's anything we can do let us know um, last note for our Power BI reporting services users uh, the features you're going to see today uh, will probably hit your version in January um, if you're not familiar with Power BI report server uh, that is essentially the on-prem version of PowerBI.com, uh, and it uses a separate install of the desktop client, which gets released. It's called Power BI Desktop Optimized for Reporting Services, and it only has three releases a year, one in January, one in May, and one in September. So uh, these features that are in the November release um, uh, uh, won't, won't be in your reporting services version. Okay, so as always, we'll talk about the new features uh, in um, the November release, and we'll take a look at a couple because they, they they dropped in another really big uh, uh, change on us this month. Um, so we'll look at some of those fun things, and then I've got a, sort of a holiday-themed, um, I'm not really going to call it a use case this, this month, uh, but just some fun things to to, to leave you with uh, here at the end of the year. Uh, and then, as always, we'll take your questions. So, uh, but if you have uh, jumped in to the November release uh, and you just toggled on all of the new preview features and restarted Power BI, you probably got a bit of a surprise um, because they have uh, completely changed the ribbon view. Um, so, uh, when you see this, uh, it's the the look and feel of that toolbar ribbon is is very different. Uh, from prior uh, uh, versions. So uh, we'll, we'll definitely show you guys that. Uh, it's pretty neat. It's, a new, it's a definitely a new look and feel. Um, and then for any of my ProClarity fans or old ProClarity colleagues on the line, uh, the decomp tree is here. So um, this was a very, probably the most popular visualization in a tool called ProClarity, which Microsoft acquired, I think, in like 2008 or 2009, give or take. Um, and uh, actually was patented by ProClarity. Um, and it's now made its way into the product. So this is really exciting. Um, I, th I think a lot of people have been clamoring for this. And I actually, I really like the way that they've, uh, they've done it. So we'll take a look at that decomp tree because that's one of my favorite features. Um, other things that they've done, uh, th th 
on the conditional formatting front, uh, they added a bunch of uh, features that you can now conditionally format and all around buttons. Um, so you can now conditionally format things like the button color, the button outline, um, I don't know the entire list off the top of my head. Um, if you are, and, and I'll, I'll show you what to go look for. I, I kind of wish, I secretly wish they had made it a little more obvious that you can conditionally format uh, certain properties. Um, you got to kind of go looking for these little three dots to know that you can do it. So um, I secretly wish they had come up with a, a different way to let me know that I could do it. But the fact that it's there is kind of great. So um, we'll show you how to, how to discover those uh, properties that you can conditionally format. Um, as always, it's a full-time job just keeping up with the new visualizations uh, that are coming out. Uh, looks like they have uh, updated the ArcGIS map. Uh, if you haven't played with that, other people call it the Esri map. Um, uh, pretty powerful uh, mapping custom visualization. Uh, it was a little notorious for being buggy uh, in prior versions. So um, you'd always get this failed to load 76 features or something like that. So, um, so I have not played with that updated ArcGIS map yet. Um, also, the, the, if you've played with any of the third party uh, company XViz, the, they are rolling out <clears throat> new um, uh, 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 visualizations at a prodigious rate. So they've really kind of splashed into the Power BI custom visuals market along with Zoom charts. So I think now that uh, these, these uh, uh, charting, I'm going to call them charting companies for lack of a better term, high charge Zoom charts, uh, those types of things. Uh, folks, now that you can monetize these custom visualizations, I think you're going to start seeing them jumping in with both feet into the custom viz market. So uh, be ready to see a whole bunch of things come down the pipe from a custom visualization perspective. Um, <clears throat> and then just a couple others that, again, I haven't had a chance to play with yet. Um, but we've got a financial reporting matrix, so that'll be interesting to see. Uh, and then I don't know what the distribution of the tree visualizations are yet. Just haven't had a chance to play with them, um, but excited to see what those are. So some good, fun, new um, visualiz custom visualizations coming down the pipe. Uh, if you're not familiar with the folks over at Zoom Charts, they've got a good um, online demo of, how, of what some of their things can do, as well as the XViz folks. Uh, I think I believe they let you download, at least they let me download their entire uh, custom Viz suite. They just put a little watermark on it uh, until you pay for it. So. Uh, so those are some of the new custom visualizations that uh, came out. And then from a data connectivity perspective, uh, a bunch of new connectors. Um, so we can, uh, now you can edit SAP variables. Um, uh, we've got um, this web by example connectors. So a bunch of new connectors that they are now uh, putting into the tool. Um, hey, Jessica, I'm getting something coming through. I don't know if you went off mute or if one of our guests went off mute, but can you just check to see? Um, Thank you. And then under the data prep side, I'm going to show you. So they are now baking in uh, some AI functions into Power Query. So if you've ever played with cognitive services in, um, in Azure, they're now introducing these into uh, into the Power Query, uh, the Query Editor. Um, this is a, pre a premium only feature, so uh, unfortunately I can't demo it for you, but I'm going to point you to uh, a blog by our, our good friend and colleague David Eldersveld who uh, walks you through uh, some of these features, and I believe he even puts uh, a little line in there on how you might be able to test it. Um, so I'll show you that. That's going to be really neat in terms of, you know, being able to bake some of these these cognitive services into your into your models to do things like sentiment analysis um, or keyword extraction, things like that. So um, some really really cool features are going to start coming our way. Um, again, it is uh, a premium only feature at this time, but I do want to just kind of expose you guys to it so you're aware uh, that it's here. And then every month, whoops, I'm sorry, was there a question? There? I'm sorry, can I jump in really quick with a question? Yeah. And I'm not getting feedback when I speak. Um, but okay. we did have a question come through in regards to the filter panel from Kristen. She wants to know if you recommend using the filter more or keeping with buttons and bookmarks to display and change data in a Power BI report. Um, I'll, how about, I'll, I'll, why don't I get to that um, in the Q&A part? Um, uh, I don't, right now, I haven't really had a chance to stress test 
uh, the other one. So I'm, I'm sticking with buttons for now. Um, uh, but I need to, I need to do some more testing on that before we, uh, before I really jump into it. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So let's go take a look at some of these new features, uh, that are, um, popping out in for us. And the first one we'll take a look at is again, um, this new ribbon look and feel. So here is the new, um, Power BI ribbon. So you can see that uh, it's really gotten a makeover. Uh, it is not as um, wide as it was before. And they've really, as some of you may have noticed, uh, they have relabeled the edit queries or the edit button to now transform data. Uh, so you have that. Um, uh, they've, they've bucketed a bunch of stuff kind of under some of these more, you know, drop down menus. Um, made it easy to get to your, maybe hopefully you guys are all doing uh, data set reuse in PowerBI.com. So some fun things there. Um, the file menu has really changed. So look at this now, this new little pop out here. Um, so uh, making it easy to get at, you know, here's, you've got get data in the file menu now as well. Um, you can imports, you can now import, you know, uh, your maybe your legacy Excel content and that sort of thing. Um, so here's where you can find your export to PDF. Um, a lot of these things, if you're not familiar, if you're, if you're new to Power BI, this new setting and a lot of these preview features um, are all set. If you come to the file menu and you come down to options and settings, and you come to options, this is where you're going to find a lot of these preview features. Um, so here about halfway down the screen, uh, you'll now this, this list changes every month. So you can see here, um, these are the these are the two features that came here in the, in the November release. Um, I believe let's see, I think these two were either October, were October or September. Can't remember. Um, so a lot of good fun things there. Uh, but that's how you turn them on. Uh, some of these will require a restart of Power BI. Uh, so just be aware of that. But that's where you would go and you could turn on the the updated ribbon or enable the decomp tree uh, visualization. So that's how you turn it on. Um, but you, as we just sort of flip through here, you can see that they've really kind of coalesced it. They've changed a lot of the icons in the toolbar just to make it look uh, uh, a little more modern. On the, the view menu, they've now exposed themes far more in like a PowerPoint kind of uh, um, way, as opposed to the choose theme uh, little drop down that they had before, as well as a way to get to your themes gallery. Um, here's your phone layout again, your, uh, you know, snap to grid and that sort of thing. So, um, I like it. It looks pretty cool, but, uh, most of us, they, they pushed the November release when I was training and we all kind of, what just happened? So, um, but that's your new ribbon, uh, look and feel, which I think is, uh, uh, pretty nice, uh, update there. So the next one we'll take a look at is our new decomp tree visualization. So when you enable the, the uh, preview feature, you get this new visualization in your uh, uh, visualizations pane called the composition tree. And so I'll just add this guy to the page. And so your, um, your measure or the, the, the number that you want to aggregate goes in the analyze shelf. So I'll just pick our friendly neighborhood net sales. And then how you want to break this thing down is just done by the explain by. So let's, maybe I want to focus on products. So I'll do a right, category, maybe subcategory, maybe manufacturer. Heck, let's even drag product and see what happens. So you'll notice now in this net sales, I get this tiny little plus sign. And if I just left click on the plus sign, I get to pick how I'm going to explode down to this, you know, whatever next level. So I could pick, for example, product category. And then I could come in maybe into computers and say, and you don't have to go in, in the order that I listed them out. You can jump around. Uh, and then I notice I can go to desktops and do manufacturer, et cetera. And I can even get down to my product level. So you can, have, you can do all sorts of fun things there. You'll notice it gives you this kind of little, you know, histogram-y kind of view. Um, so you can you can see sort of like the, the percent of total 
that comes out. Um, we, I don't, I didn't notice any tooltip shells, so they may add that later on. But notice that I can come down here now and just pick another one, for example, TV and video, and it now it's just going to expand to product subcategory, and then I can sort of expand out the whole list here uh, again, like so. And if I don't want to, if I don't want to include a level anymore, up here at the top, you'll notice that I can just remove these levels like so. Maybe I want to go product subcategory right down to product. I can skip over manufacturer and just go to product like so. And then we've got, you know, our typical um, uh, uh, formatting options. So, you know, here's our, we can do relative versus uh, absolute analysis type. Uh, we, here's how we can change our color. So maybe if you like blue instead of green, we can do that sort of stuff. Um, here's our data bars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So some fun things that you can do from a formatting perspective as you can with everything else. So again, this is that new decomp tree and then I can always come in here and if I want to say maybe start instead by manufacturer, I can do that. So I can come down here to product manufacturer and start there and then come here and do, I don't know, subcategories. So you can jump all over the place in this thing. So I really like this visualization. Um, I'm excited to see kind of what, where they go with it. Um, so you can see you got this little scroll bar up and down if you want to, you know, scroll through the list. Um, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be neat to see kind of what they end up doing with this as they go forward. Um, so haven't played with it a ton because as I mentioned, I only just got it uh, last week. But, um, but yeah, I'm excited to see where these guys uh, take this visualization. This one was a very, very popular one um, back in the ProClarity days. So I'm excited to see it make its way into the, um, uh, the Power BI tool. Okay, lastly, let's talk about some of these new um, AI insights that have made its way into the tool. Uh, and, and again, I don't, sadly, I can't really demo this for you, but uh, I'm going to use it, and that, that sound you hear is Jessica smiling, uh, to take you over to our blog. So you guys have heard me talk about David before. Uh, David's a, a Power BI MVP, unbelievably talented guy. Um, I'll show you his blog here uh, before we leave. He did a really neat thing the other day that I thought was pretty cool. So um, that'll be one of your uh, takeaways for the new year. But um, so he, what David does in this blog article is walk you through what, what um, you can do with what, what Microsoft calls cognitive services. So if, again, if you haven't uh, really played around with this, there's all sorts of fun things that you can do with these API calls, um, you know, in terms of anomaly detection, uh, sentiment analysis, that sort of thing. So there's all sorts of fun things with these, these, um, these cognitive service APIs, and they've baked a cu couple of them into the, into the query editor. Um, so again, you, when you add in um, these AI insights, and if, let me open the query editor, I'll show you where the button is. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. It's these AI transforms over here on the right. I'm not sure if you can see these. This are the new cognitive services APIs that they're baking into the query editor. Again, so it's a premium only feature, um, and I don't have access to any premium content, so I can't really demo it for you. Um, although, David, if you're on the line, if you want to run a demo, let me know. Um, but anyway, you, it allows you to add in these uh, capabilities essentially as a step in your, um, in your applied steps in one of your uh, M scripts. So you can see here, you know, he's done some image detection um, and it just adds one of these. So notice, I don't know if you can read that, it says invoke cognitive services call. So that's what it's doing there. Um, so there's all sorts of fun things, you know, scoring sentiment, that sort of thing. So this is the warning that dedicated capacity is, is premium capacity. Um, but anyway, it's there's a lot of really neat things that they are starting to bake into the tool. And I think what you're going to find, you know, they just they recently released that key influence or, or updated the key influencers visual. Um, so they've got the analyze this feature, which if you're not familiar with it uh, or you didn't stumble across it. Uh, let me see if I can find a quick chart to show you that. Uh, in there, having fun with DAX, 
time series analysis. Uh, here, we'll just do this. So if I come in and do a bar charts by, let's just do it by year. And that sales, let's say. There we go. And let me sort this instead by year and ascending. Okay. So the um, the analyze feature is if you write just you, in this case I'm in a bar chart, but this works in other visualizations as well. It's this analyze thing here where they say find where this is is different, and this is essentially running some machine learning algorithms against my data. Uh, to try to explain what's going on. So I think what you're going to find is that there are going to be a lot of these features that are going to start making their way into the tool. I think you're going to see a lot of features around AI and machine learning that are going to uh, show up in the tool. I think you're going to see Q&A get a lot of uh, uh, focus in 2020 as they try to improve that feature. Um, but I think th this tool uh, is, is far more than you know, just a pretty reporting tool. Um, when we talk about being able to do some really sophisticated ad hoc analysis, as well as you know enterprise distribution of of analytics, I think you're going to see um, some really really powerful. Not only do we have some powerful features now, uh, but I think you're going to see even more uh, make their way into this tool. So, so anyway, this is the, that's this is that analyze feature. Um, uh, this is the key influencers visualization. We've got a blog article out there as well um, uh, by Josh Crittenden, but I think if you just search for key influencers, there it is. Um, so out here, Josh has an article and walks you through the whole key influencers visualization. So, um, so if you're interested in learning more about that, that's a great place to go to get more information, but a lot of really uh, neat updates there. So that's another great blog article that you can check out um, on the key influences visual. And then again, uh, David's article on the, the AI insights coming uh, in the query editor. So all sorts of really great uh, AI and machine learning features making their way uh, into the tool. All right, and so lastly, um, what I thought I would leave you with uh, for the holidays um, are just some gift ideas for some of your favorite <laughs> Power BI uh, professionals. So a lot of a lot of times when I'm teaching class, I'll get asked, you know, what are some of your favorite resources um, out there for Power BI and Power Query? Uh, and so I, I've just started to pull these together. Um, so there's a, a couple of really great books out there. If you've ever taken uh, taken uh, Blue Granite's Power BI training with me, you hear me promote this book all the time. Uh, but this is Rob Colley's book, Power Pivot and Power BI. I love this book. Um, mine is pretty dog-eared by now because uh, I've read it three or four times. I think he does an excellent uh, job of describing uh, DAX maybe to the beginner or the intermediate person. Uh, I, th he, he, I th think he takes a really great approach to it. It's not t terribly, um, you know, it, 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 he doesn't use super technical jargon. He uses jargon that I think, you know, a lot of business folks can understand. Um, and so I really recommend this book to um, folks who are just maybe getting their start into DAX. Um, this, I think, is the great place. This is the best place to start as far as uh, DAX goes. Um, there is, of course, uh, I just don't remember if I have it bookmarked, uh, the definitive guide to DAX. Let's see if I can, is it in here? Did, 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 did. It's not. Uh, so the folks over at um, SQLBI.com wrote the definitive guide to DAX. There it is. Um, so if you are an intermediate to advanced uh, DAX person, um, this is the book you'll want, although I'm not sure why their website's kind of giving me fits. Um, hopefully it's not my internet that's giving me fits. Let's go find it on uh, Amazon. DAX. Do, 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 do. There it is. Uh, so this is, this is, uh, 
this is a 460 page book uh, on everything DAX. So the, uh, written by Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari, um, the two main guys as far as DAX goes, if you ask me. Um, so again, another great gift idea for those Power BI folks. Um, uh, this this is the book on DAX. Um, so they, they take a super, super deep dive. Uh, they talk about all sorts of different data modeling scenarios and what you might do with DAX and that sort of thing. Um, so really, really uh, encourage you guys. Um, oh, and here's their latest version. So that, that's edition one. This is edition two. Uh, but this is a great, great book. The book to have on your desk when it comes to DAX. Another book that that I just stumbled across, so I don't know when this was published, uh, but I just, I stumbled across it and I was like, ooh, I need to buy this book, um, is uh, by Gil, um, I was stumbling on Gil's last name. Um, let's, I don't wanna re create a review, I wanna show them the book, guys. Uh, let's try this. Uh, but this, this book just recently came out, I think, um, and, uh, I've only started reading it, so I'm really excited to uh, learn more about what's in this book. But it's it's one of the first ones that I found that does a really deep dive into the query editor or Power Query. Um, so uh, I'm really excited to get through this one. It's not terribly expensive, um, but from what I've read so far, it's looking really good. So I'm excited to, um, uh, so by Gil Raviv, uh, but another uh, uh, really, a book that I'm excited to to dive into. Um, the folks over at SQL BI also have um, a book that is sitting on my desk uh, that, again, I haven't started reading yet. Um, uh, on my holiday list of things to do, um, Analyzing Data with Power BI. So this one here, uh, again, by the guys over at SQL BI. Um, so uh, I have not even cracked this one, but it, knowing Marco and Alberto, it's going to be a great book. So I'm really excited to... Uh, to read that one as well. So um, check that one out. And, and uh, once, once you purchase it, all of these books have uh, supporting uh, download material so you can walk through the exercises as well, which is another, another reason why I like it. Um, so definitely encourage you guys to check those out. Um, I was asked in, or maybe it was on, it was on last month's, um, uh, webinar. Somebody asked me, you know, what are what are some good training materials for the was it the seventy seven seven eight exam or seven eight eight exam? Um, these are the books where, that I would start with, uh, just because I know the authors. So um, I think getting through these books and then it's certainly the book on DAX is probably going to get you at least ninety percent of the way in in terms of prepared for that. If you want to take that exam, that Microsoft exam, um, so I would definitely definitely check those. Uh, check those books out. Um, so, and again, if, if you're curious, um, you know, in terms of if you want to do some some light reading, uh, maybe on your uh, favorite mo mobile device, um, definitely head over to uh, David's blog. So, David Data Veld is David Eldersveld's blog, um, and he's got some really great great stuff out there, uh, including this one that I stumbled across last week. Um, if you're really into orthographic projection in Power BI. Um, so I was like, what the heck is he doing here? So the, he's doing all of this in Power BI, which is kind of amazing. And then he walks you through what the data looks like and how he did it and the scatter plot that he set up. Um, and this is what this thing can do. So I can rotate the face a little bit. I thought this was kind of amazing. All of this is done in Power BI and a scatter plot. So it's really kind of incredible some of the things that people are figuring out how to do in uh, in Power BI. So uh, definitely run out and check check this out. Uh, again, this is on David, David's blog, uh, but he's got all sorts of things out here. Um, uh, if if you've been on other um, uh, here you go, create a dynamic diverging stack bar chart in Power BI or don't. <laughs> so um, he he demoed some of his SVG images to get, you know, essentially spark lines in a table. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff out there. Um, but again, you know, all sorts of fantastic, really sort of neat content uh, all around Power BI are out on his blog. So definitely check that out. If you've been, you know that I, I a lot of times for some humor, I like to, uh, 
uh, showcase the things that he's put out on the data stories gallery. So go, definitely go check out his stuff on the data stories gallery. You will find uh, all sorts of fun things like his dancing cat generator. So everybody has to need some time for a dancing cat or two in their life. Uh, so that's uh, David's blog. Um, I, the, the blog, Gil Revee's blog is uh, data chant. Um, and he really focuses on power query. Um, so I definitely, I've really enjoyed some of the things that um, uh, 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 I've been reading on this, on his blog, in including my favorite, I love this series, so series, and so instead of doing best practices, he does a bad practices uh, series, which I kind of love. So um, anyway, I would definitely, I'm, I'm having fun uh, getting introduced to his blog here, so he's really uh, got a lot of great stuff there as well. Uh, and then, of course, you know, our good friends, well, let's, hopefully this site comes up for us. Uh, there we go. So the folks over at SQL BI who also run DAX Patterns, uh, they have DAX.Guide, DAX Formatter. They're, these are the guys behind the OKViz OK custom visualizations. Um, but this, they've always got incredible stuff out here, including, you know, we talk about this a lot when we talk about tr uh, in, in training, why star schemas are important. So um, definitely things to, right, because there's, there's no rule that says you can't just take a big flat file and slurp it in and go. Um, but these, these guys talk about, you know, why star schemas are important. So I love, the site is so full of awesome content. Uh, definitely encourage you guys to check that out. Um, and then of course, you know, not to do shame of self-promotion, but again, on our blog, we've got just all sorts of fun reading material things. We try to keep it pretty, uh, you know, short and sweet. So, uh, but all sorts of fun things out there, both education, you know, uh, industry specific. So for our health and life sciences folks, finance folks, retail and CPG, um, we got all sorts of uh, fun things out here uh, for you to check out as well as things around, um, you know, uh, um, say Power BI or a Databricks, that sort of thing. So definitely check those things out. But again, gift uh, buying ideas. Don't send me any because I've already got enough copies of all these books. Um, but uh, definitely check those out. Some great uh, gift ideas for your favorite uh, Power BI professionals for the holidays. All right, and with that, oh, let me, let me at least show you guys. So again, if you want to see, um, uh, our, where is it, tiny URL, there it is, nope, BGPBIOH. So this is our YouTube channel. Uh, here are the, so these are all the recordings, so 2019 recordings for Power BI Office Hours. Um, but again, you can come here to our, our entire channel and see all, so tabular model documentation, organizing health analytics, all sorts of fun things out here so definitely check this out subscribe follow do all that fun stuff um and you know we get we're we're putting a lot of content out here so definitely check something to check out and have fun with okay so that will wrap up my stuff for um uh the holidays so again we're going to take december off uh, and then we'll come back in January. I, I didn't bother to look and see what the fourth Thursday in January was uh, in 2020, but that's when we'll come back. Um, and in the meantime, let's go ahead and I'm gonna get the, the question window open and we'll, uh, da -da 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 -da. so yeah, so uh, Kristen's question on the, the, uh, the filter panel. Um, I don't know that there's, I, I have a recommendation yet, uh, but I would, that's, that's, this is a great thing for us to feature in January. So um, I'll definitely uh, take some time to, to work up a good demo on that, Kristen, and I'll try to get some good diagnostics on, um, you know, uh, from performance, because for me, it's really just about performance uh, and usability. Um, so at the end of the day, it's probably really more about what do your users prefer? Um, but I don't right now. I don't know that I have any um, any answers as from a performance perspective on if there, if one is better than the other. So let me take that uh, as a as a to do for the um, 
the January session, and we'll definitely come back to that. All right, so let's see. For the decomp tree, does data need to be modeled in a certain manner? Not that I'm aware of. Um, it looks like it's pretty, like, I, as I was playing with it, uh, let me come back here and let me get this question window out of the way. Um, here, let me move this over here and let me collapse this so I can get to, there we go. Okay, so let's get rid of some of these things here and let's get rid of this here. And I'm just going to get rid of those. And that, I mean, clearly you need to have relationship, right? So you need to have somewhat reasonable data model. Here's my data model if you want to see it. So it's just a pretty simple star schema um, with a couple of fact tables. But I don't believe you've got, as long as you've got your relationships working, um, my understanding is everything else should work pretty easily. So um, if I drag in fields from other tables, so there's probably category, and then I can go by you know country, for example, and then I can go by channel. So you can kind of go and anywhere you want. But as long as as long as there is a you know a relation a relationship between in this case the sales fact table and these three dimensions, uh, which I have here, right? So I can slice this by you know, there's the channel dimension, there's the product dimension, and there's the geography dimension. So well, you've got a, a you know somewhat reasonable. Uh, Data model, it, this will work just as though you were, you know, say doing drill down in a bar chart or something like that. So, um, uh, so yeah, so I, I don't believe that uh, there's no magic to the way that data has to be modeled for this visualization to work. Um, oh, yeah, Don. Don um, uh, recommended Matt Allington's book. Um, I have it. I just, in fact, here it is. It's the big yellow book. Um, another book, you should see my desk. My desk is littered with books. <laughs> so another one that I haven't had a chance to crack open yet. So uh, I think I, I've got a lot of reading to do here over the holidays. Suffice it to say. But yes, Matt Allington's book, another really good one um, uh, uh, for um, holiday reading materials. Let's see. Uh, what if there are multiple parents for the same child? Um, I don't know. So I don't know that. Well, so just maybe this is what you're asking. Let me try this. What happens if I go the opposite direction, right? So what happens if I go? Because if, if you have multiple parents for the same child, um, again, it should still just work. Um, but if I go in reverse order here, I'm only going to get the parent that's going to spit out, right? So if I come here, so product subcategory is in the opposite direction. So I go by subcategory and then I go by category. I'm just going to get one, right? So I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, again, I'm not... If you've got that model, just let me know, and I will. I'll try to play around with it. But I don't know that I've got a data model um, that would show that. I think what you would do is, you know, for example, if if camcorders could live in two categories, and you, you laid it out like this, you'd see two categories here: one with one percentage and one with the other percentage. Is my is my guess. Um, I don't have any data that looks like that in a model so if you've got some sample data that you want to send to me uh, shoot it my way and I will absolutely uh, put it through its paces and, and demo that uh, but I don't right now I don't have a, a, a sample data set that has any, any data model like that all right let's see um, while we're here and since Donald brought it up um, there it is. So this is the Matt Allington book that Donald mentioned, uh, and he's right. It's it's uh, it's getting a lot of really really good reviews. Again, I haven't I I bought it. Uh, I just haven't read it yet. So, um, but definitely uh, I've I've gotten some really good um, feedback on that uh, that book as well. So. All right. Well, um, if you got any other questions, folks, we've, we've still got about 15 minutes left. Otherwise, we can certainly give you guys uh, some time back in your day. 
Um, but again, if you're interested um, and, and you'd like to learn more about, you know, what we're what we're doing over here at Blue Granite with um, with Power BI, definitely shoot me an email. Shoot Jessica an email. Uh, we're not just a Power BI company, though, uh, so we do do a lot of other uh, technologies. Uh, we're doing a ton of Azure work right now, a ton of Databricks work. Uh, more and more machine learning AI work. So we have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of expertise here in the organization. Um, so uh, definitely keep us in mind. If you're interested in some Power BI training, shoot me an email. Uh, happy to run you through kind of what we do there. We do, we end up doing all sorts of fun, crazy things like this sort of stuff where we were playing around with um, time intelligence. And zippity do that if you get a zero. <laughs> um, so we, we just kind of have fun uh, with with the reporting side and then the DAX side and, and doing some fun things with uh, semi additive measures and things like that. So um, if you're interested in any of that, definitely give me a shout. Um, we you know we can talk about DAX and that sort of fun thing. Um, so definitely give us a shout. Um, I see one from Dan. Can you explain the difference between data sets and data flows? Sure. So um, let me log into PowerBI.com. So um, a data set is going to be the, the underlying data coming from any number of data sources, right? So I can have one Power BI data set. So it's one data set per PBIX file. Um, but that data set can, can consist of any number of data sources. So I can pull and mash together data from Excel and CSV files and SQL Server and maybe a web scrape and, you know, an API call. Um, I can mash all of that together into one data set. Um, in PowerBI.com, I need, just need to get to a reasonable workspace that, where I can show it. We also have, however, what we call data flows. So what you can think of data flows are, are essentially the query editor in the, in the cloud. So let's say, for example, you're doing, um, you know, a lot, you do a lot of imported data sets and you find that you're always hooking into maybe your, your, uh, your customer master, right? And there's, and maybe you've got customers living in two places. Maybe you've got it living in your CRM, but you've also got it in, you know, maybe Dynamics or Salesforce or something like that. So you need to do some bit of work in the query editor in M to uh, uh, get this customer master conformed when it then hits your Power BI model. And let's say you've now done this 12 times and you're on your 13th time. You're like, I always do the same code all the time. Uh, data flows really now help you sort of reuse all of that M code, but it's hosted up in PowerBI.com. Um, so it allows you to, uh, and let's see if I can get into one of these. Um, so you can come in and essentially, uh, let's see if I can get into the edit mode here. But you'll you'll notice that um, it looks a lot like the query editor. Now the not everything that you can do, I don't believe all of the features that are in the, the desktop are available here in data flows. But again, data flows are really just, so you can see here, I'm hooking into a database, uh, I'm navigating to the product table, I'm merging in uh, subcategory and category together and expanding them out and then removing a bunch of columns. And so now, if I'm in Power BI desktop and I want to reuse that, I can come to get data, whoops, and I can come to Power BI data flows. And we'll just wait, let it think here for a second. Come on, Keller, you can do it. Okay. <laughs> come on, you can do it, Power BI. Uh, but anyway, yep, that's me. Okay, and notice now I could come in and reuse this data flow, and it'll do all of that, um, all of that work for me. So all the M's already written. Um, you know, I suppose I could also, you know, what we do, what we did before data flows, is, uh, you know, you can certainly there's, you, you can certainly come in um, to your query editor, and I can take this M script, right? This, this, 
I'm essentially doing the same thing here, right? There's no, there's no saying that I can't come in here into the advanced editor and just control all copy paste. So you could totally do that. Um, data flows are just a little bit um, more, I guess, scalable. Um, so data, data flow versus data content. So the data flow is just, is just the, 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 M, the M script, right? It's just this code. It's this code hosted in PowerBI.com, which then if you connect to a data flow and click load, it's gonna run all of, all of this code and bring the data into your data model. So think of it as reusing M scripts and hosting them in PowerBI.com instead of you know, flat files floating around in SharePoint or something like that. So the data flow um, is just gonna, is gonna be the M code that you're then going to uh, uh, leverage in your models. So just to save and reuse uh, your M scripts is essentially what it is. So Dan, hopefully that explain that answered your question there. Um, uh, and again, you you can do to create uh, create these. I mean, you can see the the menu options here at the top. So you can do your data mashups. Uh, you can you know you can add or remove columns. You can remove or you know keep rows, that sort of thing. Um, do some simple uh, transforms and that sort of thing. So, um, but again, not all of your uh, uh, capabilities exist up here yet, as, as far as I know. That could have changed. I haven't played with data flows in a couple months, so. Okay, so again, data flows. Um, only live in PowerBI.com. Um, notice you can also start hosting machine learning models. I don't have any, uh, but you could you could use these as uh, insight models in your Power uh, uh, Power Query steps as well. And then again, these are my data sets, right? So this is where, if it's an imported data set, this is where the data lives. If it's a direct query or live connect data set, it's a connection string back to whatever the, the, the underlying source is. Uh, and notice that they're now allowing you to endorse these data sets. So if you are you know, talking about data set reuse and you want, want to make it easy for your business users to find that data set that they want, um, here's one way where Power BI admins can say, Look, these are certified, these are not. So use your certified ones and, and you know, we'll support you. Use uncertified ones at your own risk, for example. Um, so uh, folks can also promote their own data sets. So if they want, and, and what that looks like in Power BI Desktop, let me get, get out of here. Uh, I need a new file. Because when you connect to a PowerBI.com data set, it's the only data set you can connect to in that PBIX file. It's the, 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 the experience is almost exactly the same as, it is exactly the same as connecting to my analysis services model. Uh, but if I just do get data and I say, boop, 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 come on, killer, power platform, and I come to Power BI data sets and I select connect, Notice that my endorsed data sets show up first, and then all the other ones that I can see in PowerBI.com are then listed. And I can search for things and stuff like that. So you can see I'm really, really guilty of publishing things and then not accessing them for forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, so that is uh, what endorsed data sets will look like when you when your users go to connect to them uh, from the desktop tool. Okay, um, what is the name of that hierarchy visual again? Oh, uh, it's called the decomposition tree. Um, and it is a preview feature. So uh, you need to turn it on first. So you need to come to file, options and settings, options. And under preview features, it's this last option here, this guy. So it's the decomposition tree visual. Uh, and then again, um, did I put it on page four or five? Four. Uh, and then it's just a matter of the analyze 
uh, shelf is just which measure do you want to look at, and then explain by is just you know the different features, uh, different fields that you want to you know essentially slice and dice by. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, funny enough, these shelves are exactly the same as the shelves in the key influencers visual. Um, so, but yeah, I'm I'm I mean the, the, we're still missing some things, right? Like I, I wish that I could hover over this thing and get the both the number and the percentage. So I'm hoping they'll start adding in like tool tips and stuff like that. Uh, but I, as a V1 product, I think this is pretty great. So um, really excited to kind of see where they, where they go with this. Okay, um, so it's 10.53. Uh, if if uh, there aren't any other questions, we can give you a, a couple minutes back to your day. Uh, if there are other questions, feel free to, to throw them in the, in the chat window. Um, so again, we're going to take uh, December off. Uh, we'll be back in January. Um, and so look for those emails. Um, Kristen, I promise that I will, uh, I'll, I'll work, uh, well, she left, but I'll work on this uh, uh, demo for the filter panel. Um, so we'll look at that. Uh, and then we're going to start also having some industry specific use cases. So that'll be fun to look at. So check, watch for those emails. Uh, but in the meantime, if there are any other questions, uh, I hope everybody has a very safe and happy uh, and enjoyable holiday season. Um, uh, have, happy early Thanksgiving to those of us here in the States uh, and happy holidays to, to you and yours, wherever you may be. And we will see you in January of 2020. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you in the new year.